What is up, everybody? Welcome, welcome, welcome. We are here for Classic Cast number 10. Number 10 already. We're here with uh, Tips Out. We're here with Stay Safe TV. We are. What's up? And uh, today's going to be a little bit different Classic Cast, actually. Uh, it's going to be a little bit different, uh, a little bit more speculatory on the, the future of WoW as a whole. Uh, with the implementation of the recent 8.0 patch and how it relates to Classic. Um, it's no secret that they're hearkening back to the origins of WoW, uh, origins of Warcraft, really, I should say, uh, with the story of Battle for Azeroth and taking it back to Orcs versus Humans, Horde versus Alliance. Um, we're really starting to see some of that, not just in the story, but in the design of the game as well. And how we want to look at that and how it relates to Classic, like I said. Uh, Tips, you, you, you had some thoughts on that. Do you want to go ahead and start us off? Absolutely. First and foremost, good morning, everybody. Good evening, depending on where you are in the world. But uh, I'm sure a lot of you guys have noticed, as well as my co-hosts here, that there's been a number of systematic changes that have happened in BFA that are actually taking the game backwards or seemingly backwards and kind of have more of a vanilla vibe associated with them. So things like, you know, just to mention a few off the bat, things like buffs being reintroduced into the game, things like the global cooldown changes, all sorts of different changes to the game on a mechanical <clears throat> level that have made the game seem more vanilla-esque than, uh, I guess, versus modern WoW. And mm -hmm. I think it's very interesting. And we want to talk to you guys today about all of these different changes and how we feel they're going to affect the game, as well as the possibility of changes like this continuing in the future as well. <clears throat> Yeah, yeah. Sure. I mean, the first thing that comes to mind when I when we're talking about these these sort of throwbacks to the past is the way the game is being presented to us, how they're advertising, how they're marketing it, the story of BFA, and like everything we've seen with BFA. I mean, if you look at the box art or the login screen, it screams it screams Warcraft. I mean, the box art is you have this orc staring down this human, like glaring menacingly at each other. This is a throwback to the box art of Warcraft One and Warcraft Two, the old RTS games. Mm -hmm. There are people today that probably don't know what RTS is. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of an old dead genre. Anyway, but yeah, these original Warcraft games. Um, and then like the story, of course, is like very heavily, um, you know, Horde vs. Alliance centric. So I think they are definitely, at, from marketing and story and advertisement, they're definitely doing a throwback to that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I mean, even like from the moment you log in, uh, the new login screen for BFA, I didn't even think of, I didn't think of, wow, I thought of Warcraft. Right, like I, I even even more so than the Dark Portal. I see the Dark Portal. I think, wow, whenever I saw, you know, you, you see the helmet, you see the sword. Like it, it just looked, it looked like Warcraft to me. Um, so, like we said, from a marketing standpoint, from a storytelling standpoint, we get the vibe. I mean, we had the recent classic announcement, recent relatively, and uh, it, it all seems to be like for the first time ever, they're they're kind of trying to turn it around and they're trying to kind of go back to to its origins, to its roots. Yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah, I know it's funny that stuff. It's, it's funny that you mentioned the marketing real quick. I just remembered this. Uh, did you guys see those four commercials that just came out? Yes. Yeah, I oh, watched I them all. Them. So uh, there's been four BFA related commercials, like advertising commercials that have come out. They're actually available on the Warcraft YouTube channel. But uh, all of those commercials are literally just Horde versus Alliance. And going hand in hand with what you guys were saying, it, it, it all harkens back to the original game. I think that's really interesting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For sure. And uh, the thing, the big thing for, for me and for us, we, we've all talked about this already, we've talked about this before, uh, we're noticing that it, it, it's easy to try and sell something, okay? It's easy to try and sell something and say like, oh, look, you know, we're taking it back, we're going back to this. Uh, myself and, and probably a lot of you guys as well felt this way about Warlords of Draenor, where it's like, it was kind of marketed this way. It was kind of marketed to where like, oh, we're going back and all this stuff, we're going back to Draenor, we're going back in time. And then we all freaking got debated super hard, and uh, that that was that. Uh, so, so the different thing here for for the BFA, at least in the 8.0 pre patch that we're noticing, is and this is how I feel for the first time in years in Warcraft, in, in World of Warcraft, I'm having to make decisions whenever it comes to gearing, whenever it comes to choosing my talents, whenever it comes to pretty much anything in combat, and at least for my entire experience of playing Legion, in the capacity that I played it, everything was super streamlined. The, the first time I, I logged in, I knew how to get, I, I knew all the talents to pick right away because it just made sense. Like, oh, just do, 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 this is what you pick. Uh, at least for Paladins. So that's not really the case. And every day it's like people are like, oh, I think this talent is better. I think that talent's better. 
And it's a lot of the same discussions and a lot of the same feelings that I get and I, I know other people get whenever we play Vanilla WoW, whenever we have Classic WoW, we have the old talent trees. So it's it's not the same as the old talent trees, but it, it's kind of in the same in the same breath in terms of having to make choices and decisions and uh, there's there's more give and take there instead of just like, oh, well, clearly you take this. Uh, and, and that's something I'm really, really excited about. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's, like you said, it's the first time in my memory, I mean, I've been playing the game since vanilla. I cannot remember any time since vanilla where Blizzard has actively made changes to the game that are more like vanilla than like the modern direction they're taking. And it's more than just one or two. We have about 10 changes listed here beyond the meta stuff that we already talked about. Um, the first of which being the return of buffs. Hmm. And um, I know, uh, I know, stay safe. You know a lot about buffs in vanilla. You played a warlock, a lot of buffs, debuffs. So, so can you kind of describe for the audience, I guess, how buffs worked in vanilla? Yeah, I mean, just about every class, just about every class, and actually uh, some specs have different buffs also in vanilla WoW. You, you had like, uh, you know, before you would engage a raid fight, and we haven't seen this, I think they took them out right before WAD, right? So we haven't seen them in WAD or in Legion, and now they're bringing them back for BFA. Every class is going to have its own unique class buff. Um, there was a moment of, of, it was really cool, like before you would, uh, you're, you're getting ready to go fight this raid boss, or you're, uh, you're getting ready uh, to, uh, for the battleground to start in your pre-made. You had this moment of like, okay, everyone do your buffs, we're gonna sort of power up, and you see the symbols popping up above people's head, and I was like, all right, okay, we're buffed up, now we're ready to go. Mm -hmm. And that hasn't been in the game. That hasn't been in the game for the last four or five years, and they're finally bringing it back. And I, th I think that, that I, I don't know, like, for me, that feels like a very satisfying ritual. Like, okay, get ready, and now we're ready, and let's yeah. go, and let's go fight. <laughs> well, um, I, I was yeah, just go gonna say, like, I mean, you even look at, it, it, it used to be a core principle of the game, to the point where you guys look at the old South Park episode, where they're going to go fight the guy, and it's like, okay, like, pop your, like, arcane elixir. No, arcane intellect, that's what he says. Like, hey, your arcane <laughs> yeah. intellect, and they're telling them to do all their stuff. And it, it's funny because it's like, yeah, it's a joke, but at the same time, like, that's that's what you did in Classic. And uh, like Tip said, this is the first time. This is the first time that, you know, as far as any of us at least can remember that they're trying to take the they're trying to take the ship and, and steer it back. They're like, wait a second, maybe... Maybe this isn't right. Maybe maybe we need to do a little bit more of this. Maybe maybe it used to be better the other way. Um, I don't know. That's something that's something to me that is very uh, it's 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 exciting to see, but at the same time, uh, we have to kind of wait and see and, and to see if they follow through with that as well. I definitely hope they do, especially mm -hmm. in context of the buffs, like. The, the feeling of powering up, like literally going Super Saiyan, you know, before like a raid or before a, a BG, it's incredibly satisfying. And like beyond that, it just made every class feel like it was contributing to a raid environment beyond just healing or damage or whatever. Yeah. Like when exactly. you know for, yeah, like, yeah, sorry, go ahead. Some people were brought to raids, not because of their high DPS performance or anything else or their high healing output. They were there only to buff. Like everyone had a value in a different way. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Paladins. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think like, uh, especially in Burning Crusade with Paladins too, but um, one thing that I keep saying, and, and this is this is a step further that, this is a step further than where I think they're going to go with it, but everybody's always talking about parses. And, and, and whether it's vanilla, whether it's Legion, whether it's BFA, whatever it is, everybody wants their parses. Everybody wants to do good damage. Everybody wants to do good healing. The thing is... And I, and I don't know if they'll go this far. Not having every class be competitive on damage, not have every class be competitive in every single aspect, but to provide to the raid in other ways, like it was in vanilla, is, to me, that's good game design, right? And some people say, like, well, that's not fun. It's like, well, maybe that class isn't for you. Maybe your class is, you know, go play Fury Warrior, go play Rogue, go play Mage in vanilla, right? Mm -hmm. But we'll, we'll see. I mean, I, I know everybody's been, as soon as the 8.0 patch hit, everybody was talking about parses. And I, I almost think, I, and the reason we're bringing this up, and really this is, this is the whole point of this podcast, is we're seeing these changes in relation to Classic, right? We're seeing these changes to the retail version of the game and how it relates to Classic. And I don't think it's necessarily like you're preparing. You're not necessarily like preparing people for Classic, but... I think it's, okay, people want classic so bad, what were some good elements of classic, and how could we go and, and kind of kind of merge the two and meet them in the middle, like, let's take this, maybe this was a little bit better, we like this better in, in Legion and BFA, whatever, in retail, and, and I think that might be something that they're looking at, 
my original viewpoint on this, and, and I still kind of think this, and I could be wrong, but I think that you do have two, two separate markets. You have people that, that like BFA, you have people that like vanilla, and then there's, it's like a Venn diagram. There's some people in the middle that overlap. Uh, and with the addition of Classic, with Classic coming out, I think that it's like, okay, this gives them the opportunity to do whatever they want with BFA, whatever they want to do with uh, whatever the next expansion is going to be. But it, what seems to be happening is instead of just kind of like taking them and separating them, they might just be like, okay, well, let's make this thing better. Or let's make this thing whatever people want to see the most. And, and better is subjective right now because we don't really know. But um, that, that's just kind of the way things are trending, and I think that's very interesting because I, I thought they'd, they'd try and separate a little bit more, but it seems like they're merging a little bit more instead. Yeah, I like that they're, they're, they're taking a risk and they're definitely trying, and I think they, they acknowledge there are some good parts of Vanilla WoW. Not everything is good, but a lot of things are good, and they're trying to incorporate those things in. There's another big factor why I think this is happening. Uh, Ian Hesacostas. So Ian Hesacostas uh, became game direct game director is that the, is that the official title yeah. uh, for it? Mm -hmm. So he be, he became game director just a couple months before Legion came out. But uh, right. at that point, you know, Legion was sort of at least like the majority of it was pretty much already wrapped up. So BFA is the first expansion Ian has had complete contr developmental control over. This is this is his project. Um, and for those of you who don't know, Ian back in the day was he, he was a scarab lord. He he was a I think he was a prot warrior as a scarab lord. So he 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 raided way back in the day he's been here since day one pretty much and i think that being his history uh i, I think he acknowledges and appreciates a lot of the original yeah. vanilla WoW game game design and raid design and, and progression philosophy and i hope and i mean it, things are looking good i mean i don't agree with him on everything but with a lot of the changes we're seeing with bfa that are sort of reminiscent of vanilla wow i i i i hope that he will continue with that Mm -hmm. Absolutely. The game isn't going to transform into Vanilla WoW 2.0 overnight. That's impossible. But baby steps like this, kind of rewiring the habit slowly, I think it's definitely a good thing. I think, uh, especially if you're a Vanilla fan, you know, as much as I want to see Classic again, and of course we're all Classic fans here, the idea of possibly having a game made in the same spirit of Vanilla or with similar design philosophies as Vanilla, but with new content that we've never seen before, kind of like a patch 1.13, that's pretty exciting too. And uh, it's very nice that they're taking these changes and they're taking these steps kind of back into that direction. And speaking of that, uh, it's not just the buffs they've changed. They've also changed the global cooldown, or at least how abilities work on the global cooldown. Mm -hmm. S-Fan, do you want to talk about that a little bit, especially how it pertains to Rhett? Yeah. Uh, so this is something that uh, basically from the beginning, and you know, we, we have friends from uh, all across the, uh, the, the spectrum of WoW, and... One of, the, one of the things that universally a lot of people were really upset about, I think, was the global cooldown change. A lot of people don't like that there were so many things added on the global cooldown. And uh, those of you guys who've watched my streams recently, I've, I've been doing a lot of arena. I, I really enjoy PvP. And I, I made this point the other night. Whenever you don't have as many abilities, when you have certain abilities not on the global cooldown, you could basically hit two buttons at the same time. And, uh, you know, the, the, the point is brought up that whenever you're playing at the high end, when you're playing at the high end of the game and it's like in a hundred percent perfect world with you're making the perfect decisions every time then it just allows you to make decisions faster so it like increases uh the skill cap now my argument to that is it actually uh it actually raises the floor as much as uh, more so than it increases the skill cap because it allows you to make the wrong decisions and fix it right away it allows you to like fat finger a button it allows you to, to hit two buttons at the same time and it's okay uh, there's multiple times where you guys have seen me. I, I've died in arenas because I get too aggressive and my bubble's on the global cooldown. I don't have auto bubble anymore, which is funny. I should be used to that. Uh, <laughs> but but I get really aggressive. My bubble gets on the global cooldown. Can't bubble. I can't stun somebody and pop my wings right away. This slows down the game in a sense, but it also makes your decisions much more valuable because every decision that you're making, or at least the, the overwhelming majority of the decisions that you're making, uh, now have a uh, th there's a risk attached to it. Right, I don't have a get out of jail free card, and I think in reality it speeds up PvP. It speeds up the game, despite the fact that it slows down combat. It slows down the 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 micro, and it speeds up the macro. If that makes sense, um, I, I think it's a really really good change for the game. And uh, again, it's it's uh, very similar to Classic WoW that plays a little bit slower and it makes your decisions matter more. That's the big thing I've noticed with this patch, and uh, that's the big thing with Classic too. Like your decisions matter. Your decisions matter in Classic, and I think they want to give you that feeling back 
uh, again, it's it's not the same. It's it's not the same. But they're trying to give people back that feeling of your decisions matter, and uh, I think that's really really good. Absolutely. I mean, um, you brought it up a little bit. Like I'd say the main difference between vanilla combat and retail combat is that vanilla you, you're calculating a lot more. It's not necessarily as spammy. It's not as fast paced mm -hmm. or as dynamic. But at the same time, you're making a lot more decisions internally, uh, especially because you have to manage resources. That's something that's kind of been long gone in the game. Yeah. But like knowing how much mana you have, you know, should I use this rank of an ability or should I use that rank of an ability? Um, kind of understanding how much rage you have, for example, and, and you know, acting accordingly. Mm -hmm. um, that's what I like about the global cooldown changes. I noticed when I was doing a, a dungeon the other day, I played Arms Warrior and I was wondering, like, I had two mobs up and one of them was about to die, should I just tap target and execute that mob, or should I pop sweeping strikes and try to cleave both of the mobs down? Like, it, it creates this decision that I have to make because I only have, like, two or three globals left, and I have to make that decision instantaneously. So it definitely adds that kind of calculation back into the gameplay. Um, it's, again, it's not as visceral, maybe. Like, it, you're not doing as much APM, or at least you don't think you are. But uh, it does make combat a little bit more interesting. And again, that's, that's how vanilla was. Most of the... Mm -hmm. Most of the cooldowns, almost all of the abilities in vanilla were, were on the GCD. Yeah. And uh, it's very similar to that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, back in vanilla, I mean, for, for a long time, managing your GCD was a skill in itself and always sort of planning around it. And you were not only were you managing your own, if you're fighting someone in PvP, you were thinking about their GCD as well. And that was that was that was a skill by itself. But I mean, personally in, in retail these days in Legion, I don't play PvP at a high level and I don't raid at a high level. So I guess maybe take my opinion with a grain of salt. But one thing I hear from people all the time that are that are coming back and playing retail is that the game has felt a lot like back in Legion and stuff. The game has felt a lot like Diablo 3, where it is just spam, 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 not much thought. If, it, if it's off cooldown, you're using it. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I think that I, I personally can appreciate a much slower, more methodical, thought out, premeditated. Uh, maybe there's arguments to be made for that gameplay, such as Vanilla WoW. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, a sure. big thing for me is like uh, I'm playing WoW. I'm not playing Guitar Hero. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, yeah. it's it's an MMO. It's not it's not an RTS. It's not StarCraft. You know, and it's it's one of those things where uh, I, I shouldn't feel like just spamming the buttons over and over again is is the best option. Uh, I I need to make I need to be decisive. I need to be precise with what I want to do. I, I, I honestly, I like it a lot. Like I, I was dueling th this morning. I was dueling for freaking like two hours, I think, off stream, uh, just outside of Stormwind. This is another thing, by the way. So they got rid of templates, okay? They got rid of templates, and duels are not like completely stupid now because it's it's you got the power creep issue. They kind of they condensed everything down. They reduced the numbers, uh, made it to where it's actually numbers that you can see. Dueling is 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 back. Like people are actually like dueling outside Stormwind. I have had more conversation with people in game in the last two days, not even since the patch. In the last two days, I've had more conversation with people in the game than I have had in the entire time I've played Legion. And I'm, I'm dead serious about that. Like, I've had actual conversations with people, people like come, oh, like, oh, I saw your stream, this and that. And, and just like talking to people and dueling and like, oh, I think this is good, I think that's good. It's a lot of how it was in Classic. And, and that's like, if, if people are liking this in BFA, they can expect to see some of that same stuff in Classic. It's it's very much, uh, I, I'm getting that similar feel that I got again, uh, and I'm really, really, really excited about that. Yeah, talking to people in 2018, yeah, that's right. No, it's it's <laughs> real, like, I mean, it's uh, it's something that I'm very excited about, and, and that's that's what Classic's all about. So this is almost like you're getting a little taste of it now, and if that's something that you like, you're gonna love Classic, I think. Absolutely, it's funny, a lot of people say that uh, you know, the social element of the game has disappeared, not because of the game itself, but because of like this modern generation or something like that. Mm -hmm. I completely disagree. I think it was all systems based. And when you create systems that make people dependent on others or give incentive to communicate with others, people will communicate with others. It's just a matter of designing systems in such a way that kind of incentivize that communication. Absolutely, 100%. I mean, human nature has not changed in the last 14 years. It has not. People respond to incentives in Vanilla WoW. I can't think of a game that, that incentivizes, rewards, encourages, fosters community and player interaction and teamwork more than Vanilla WoW. I can't think of one game. And that that those those encouragements and, and incentiv incentivizations in Legion, just, they just don't exist. There, you, mm -hmm. you could you could pretty much do almost everything without ever talk 
I yep. was thinking of doing like like a no discussion Iron Man challenge where I see how far I could get in the game without ever typing to anyone. I think that'd be a really funny experiment. Yeah, I think I think that'd be <laughs> hilarious actually. Yeah. A couple of years back, somebody tried to do uh, like leveling in in, uh, in World of Warcraft without doing anything, and literally all he did was queue up dungeons and AFK, and he got to like level sixty before he got banned. Jeez, Louise, that's so yeah. funny, yeah. man. But uh, but you know, it's not just those two changes. There's been a number of others. Yeah. Um, one of my favorites, honestly, uh, is the decrease in threat generation. Yeah, I, yes. Okay. There you go. Yeah, like, uh, that, it's just, I've only done a couple of dungeons in the past couple of days, but I will tell you, on my Guardian Druid, it's feeling good. I'm actually kind of having to focus, and I get that Monka S feeling, like, oh my god, is my threat dropping, you know what I mean? I haven't had that feeling probably since, like, early Wrath, and it feels really good. Yeah, I think I think that's really good. Uh, just, like, again, it's like you, you have to watch, I mean, back in, back in vanilla, you have, like, KTM, or, or back in, like, the older expansions, KTM, Omen... Those are those are the two uh, add-ons that come to mind. But like you, you had to have a threat meter, and you know threats calculated not just from your damage, but from different modifiers. Certain abilities do more threat uh, percentage-wise, whatever. But uh, you you had to look at that as a DPS. Like you constantly had to have one eye on your threat meter because it's like you want to look at the DPS meter, but at the end of the day, don't look at your DPS meter in the fight. You got to look at your threat meter because if you pull aggro, you're dead, right? And if you're dead. Uh, you, you don't really do a whole lot of damage, so yeah, no. I, I, I think it's something that's cool. Like again, just making decisions. You have to look more. You have to pay more attention. I love I it. I remember two months ago during Legion, uh, but this is before pre-patch, obviously. I was watching a streamer, and she was doing Mythic plus fifteen carries, and uh, someone in chat said, "Hey, uh, what do you do to increase your threat your threat generation?" And she she was just like, "What's that? Yeah. What is that?" Like. You know, as a tank, you have taunt, you taunt stuff, but your your th like threat generation, mm -hmm. you don't worry about threat. It's not even a thing. Threat yeah. isn't. It wasn't an issue, uh, and now it is becoming more of an issue. Like threat used to be a mechanic. Right. It was a thing that that capped your DPS. If you're a DPS, you were always checking the meter. You you were doing threat drop mechanics. The tank, you know, a good tank. You you, you actually had defensive tanks and and threat generation tanks. Two different types of tanks. And uh, like it, it was a very, very important part of raiding. And now, uh, for a yeah. long time, it just wasn't. It just wasn't. Yeah. Well, yeah. It, go ahead. Sorry. No, no, it's okay. Go ahead. Well, I was just gonna say, like, uh, you know, speaking of threat generation. So, so in vanilla WoW, there's a lot of like things have changed over the years, right? People have figured out. Uh, no changes. Sorry. I uh, know, but people have learned. People have learned over the years, and. One of the big things is I remember back in the day, it was like, oh, uh, the tank, spam Sunder. Spam Sunder whenever you start the fight. Get five stacks of Sunder up, that's how you generate threat. Hit your Thunderclap. No. The, now we've learned that your prop warriors, when they're tanking, you're not actually the one who puts up Sunder, and, and most times you don't even put up Thunderclap. Like, if you have four Fury Warriors... Really, I mean, you, you could put up one Sunder, right? And you have four Fury Warriors. Your DPS Warriors are actually hitting a Sunder to open up their rotation. So not only does that allow your tank to go into his TPS rotation after that, but every single one of your DPS Warriors putting up Sunder on their first hit gives you five stacks immediately and increases your overall melee DPS on the on the boss because reduces more, more armor. Um, ways to generate threat in vanilla WoW are... It's actually surprisingly, it's surprisingly interesting, I, I should say, because it's like, you know, you don't think something like threat, it's like an invisible, it's an invisible number, it's an invisible stat, you can't even really see it without the, uh, without the add-on, but people have figured out ways to min-max it and how to, how to properly apply it, and it's, it's totally changed, and uh, I think that's cool, I think that's really cool. Absolutely, mm -hmm. and, and the second part of that, it's not just the tank themselves, it's the DPS around the tank. Yeah. DPS are having to possibly slow down their damage just a little bit, wait for the tank to grab aggro. And again, it transforms the combat from being this spammy, dynamic, visceral experience <laughs> to more of a calculating experience, a decision-making decision based experience. And it kind of, you know, it kind of scratches a different itch, I guess you could say, from a gameplay perspective. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as a DPS, especially a Warlock in Vanilla WoW, I've played with bad tanks and I've played with good tanks. And if I'm with a good tank, I can do more DPS because they're pumping out more threat. And, I'm, I, and you know, I'm not going to be threat locked. Being threat locked mm -hmm. as a DPS in Vanilla WoW, like, if you do one more Shadow Bolt and you get an unlucky crit or something, you will pull the boss and you'll die. Mm -hmm. So, it, threat management is actually, it adds a lot to the skill cap of tanking. Mm -hmm. Like, if you're properly doing your, your, thre your threat output rotation or not. Yeah. And it allows a tank, it allows different tanks to distinguish themselves more. Like, you will be able to tell 
who is a better tank and who is a worse tank now because it's going to be obvious to the dps mm -hmm. if a dps runs in he starts doing his rotation and he dies he's going to be like oh crap this yeah. guy's not very good maybe versus like finding a tank that no matter what you do you can unload from the first moment uh, it's definitely going to make you appreciate that tank uh, a little bit more i'm very curious as to how it's going to work with the skittish uh, buff and mythic plus or the fix or whatever yeah so is it going to stack with skittish and is skittish still the same threat modifier because if it is dude those dungeons that'd be crazy yeah it's it's gonna it's gonna be like vanilla like when it comes to threat i think yeah it's gonna be like, it will oh. probably it might even be harder honestly <laughs> if it's the same if it's if it's the same amount as it is in legion they, they have to they have, they're probably gonna have to reduce the amount but uh it, it's funny actually just stay safe you're you reminded me of a story so stay safe and i raided together for a little bit and uh we, we've done blackwing layer and i remember specifically on broodlord on broodlord lash layer and blackwing layer what we had to do stay safe would be riding the freaking tank's tail and if the if there's the threat drop and stay safe gets hit and stay safe pulls aggro well he's dead right and people get knocked around and they get hit in the, the whelps in the back it, it's a huge mess so what we had to do stay safe would pop a living action potion he would or not sorry not living action potion a limited and vulnerability potion and right. that is i believe six seconds of immunity and that six seconds of immunity allows him to go over cap on threat because he is immune, the mechanics of the game in vanilla make it to where that uh, that boss, that mob, won't target the guy who's immune to damage. Like, they're, they're kind of smart, right? So he would get six seconds, and then what I would do at the end of that six seconds, I would bop stay safe. So stay safe would essentially get 16 seconds of just going full ham at the end of the boss, uh, allowing him to go over threat. Now, if we were to happen to not kill them in that time, then stay safe was going to die. <laughs> but uh, usually we do that at the very yeah. end. So Yeah, you save it for the last like 10 or 15%. The boss has to be dead by the time that that, that time period is up. Otherwise, <laughs> otherwise yeah. the boss is going to snap onto me the one, whenever that bop drops. People get dead. pissed. <laughs> yep. It, it's crazy. It's crazy how different the combat was back then because of things like threat generation. Yeah. But but uh beyond just the actual game mechanics you have things like the removal of auto grouping in mm -hmm. world quests and we talked a little bit about the social aspect before but i want to kind of come back to that so uh basically you can no longer use the pre-made group finder tool to auto accept people into a world quest group you actually have to talk or, or kind of manually find a group for world quests what do you guys think about that uh i think anything i think anything that increases the social aspect of the game is good um, here's the thing. People are naturally, this is just how it works, you're going to take the most comfortable route. You're going to take the path of least resistance. That's how people work. That's natural. So whenever you can queue up for something, whenever you can automatically just get into something and not have to worry about talking to anybody, not have to worry about this, then that's just, your natural inclination is to do just that. Whether you like it or not, that's, that's what ends up happening. Now. The difference is, whenever people are put into a situation where they have to adapt, they have to be adaptable, a lot of times like you end up getting a sense of fulfillment, a sense of, uh, a sense of accomplishment, a sense of joy even, out of doing that, right? Just getting to talk to people, just getting to talk to people, just getting to interact with them, uh, and, and get to come together and uh, accomplish a task, whether that's do a dungeon, do a raid, PvP together, uh, it's, it's a lot better, I think. Even a quest, it's a lot better. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, th I think today in the game, like, I very strongly feel this way. I think there's too many menus, there's too many tabs, there's too many panes, there's too many queues. I hope in Classical, when Classical comes out, I hope to queue for BG, we have to run, you know, if you're a horde, you have to run to the barons and talk to the guy uh, for worse on goals. I, I want that. I think there is something to be said for too much instant, instant gratification. I like, imagine this. Remember back in Classic when you had to, you and your boys in your dungeon group had to run, all five of you had to run to the to the instance together. If you didn't have a Warlock, you all had to go there. On that journey, just going out in the world and actually traveling somewhere, going out and engaging with the world, maybe you inadvertently killed a mob and got a, and got a world BOE epic, or maybe you saw a group of Horde and you, you had world PvP. Like, people say you can, you can still do that. Yes, you can still do that, but, but players respond to incentives. And like Espan said, people tend to take the path of, of least resistance. Like people, it's not human nature that's changed. It's just that things, like people will do what they have to do. And um, mm -hmm. they, they've made the game easier in, in that one regard, at least. Exactly. Or, or, or more convenient, at least. <laughs> exactly. And what I found so interesting about this specific thing was like, I think this represents the first attack 
on like the modern streamlined LFG system. Like ever since the Dungeon Finder tool was introduced in Wrath of the Lich King, basically every element of the game has had some kind of form of a, a pre-made group finder or some kind of streamlined way to group up, whether it be questing, raids, dungeons, yeah. everything. You have LFR, you have the pre-made group finder, whatever. It's the first time since Wrath of the Lich King that they've kind of taken a step back and removed one of these streamlined group finder features instead of elaborated on it. And uh, what what excites me about that is that it's kind of set a precedent now to possibly, I'm not gonna say get rid of LFR, but like uh, it definitely sets a precedent to kind of possibly continuously work backwards and kind of go back to, you actually have to talk to people, your reputation actually matters on a server in order to be able to get into groups. Mm -hmm. Do you see that as a possibility? Do you see a potential for the group finder tool being restricted to the point of obsolescence or possibly getting rid of LFR down the line? I mean, is this just a pipe dream or what? So you, you go ahead, Stacey, go ahead. I think, the, I think the majority of these features are way too ingrained. I think there are way too many people that only pay for a WoW sub to LFR raid. I, I bet there are hundreds of thousands of people that, that the mm -hmm. only reason they pay for a while sub every month is so that they can LFR rate and see the content, even though it's on the easiest wheelchair difficulty. Like I genuinely think that. So yeah. I don't I don't think that they'll take that away. Yeah, I uh, I agree with you. I do think, and and you know this is classic cast. It's not BFA cast. So I don't want to go too much into this, uh, but I I do have my own opinions on on how power creep is uh, how 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 the power creep develops in in the current state of retail wow and uh i, I actually I, I think ian has a coast just hit the nail on the head but uh there's there's other things that they might have to do to fix it and maybe removing a difficulty right and again like this is, this is a class cast we're not we're not trying to get too much into to bfa here but having so many difficulties in bfa and retail wow causes there to be a tremendous amount of power creep within each raid tier not just like the, the typical amount of power creep that we saw in vanilla, right? You see, in vanilla, you see a progression of, uh, you know, you have your, you have your dungeon gear, you have your pre-raid stuff, crafted stuff, whatever. And then you even have some crafted stuff that bleeds up higher into this. But like, you have your MC gear, you have your BWO gear. And then after BWO, you start to see a little bit more of a, uh, a little bit of an exponential increase, uh, just a tad, into AQ40 and into Nax. And there's a couple of reasons for that. One is because they found out what specs people are playing and they were making gear to accommodate those specs as opposed to just gear with like good stats. That's why a lot of times like people's like best in slot for each patch is not tier at all. Um, but you see that and then you get to the point where you're in Nax and then Nax is where it changes and then you have, I mean, hyper optimized tier three gear, all this stuff. So you're not only getting higher item level, but you're also getting better itemized gear, and that causes the gear in Nax to be like really, really strong. But I also think that's deservedly so for how few people actually had Nax. I mean, cleared not only on farm, but cleared, uh, let alone stepping into it. In retail, wow, the fact that they have LFR, they have normal, they have heroic, they have mythic means that there's so much power creep because you have to make a difference between this gear because if the LFR gear is too good, uh, too good, then the Mythic players and the Heroic players and even the normal players are going to be upset about that. You already have that issue with Titan Forging, which I think they should have gotten rid of. But if you didn't have as many of these, then there would be less power creep between these tiers. Maybe if there was three, maybe if there was two. Uh, I don't think LFR is something that they're going to get rid of, right? As much as... As much as I, I think it shouldn't have ever been there in the first place, um, <clears throat> I don't think that uh, I, I don't I don't think that's something that that's easily fixed, and it's something that really wasn't an issue as much in vanilla. Power creep is a good thing, and I have a, okay. So I have a video explaining this. I was on stream. It's not even a real video. Okay, I have a video explaining power creep, and it's not even a real video. It's, it's it was from my stream. It's a stream clip. So my thoughts are all over the place, but. <clears throat> I explain, I try and explain how power creep is actually a good thing. I was explaining how the power creep in, in vanilla works a little bit more in depth off the cuff. And uh, a lot of people are like, well, wait, you know, isn't power creep bad? It, I got a lot of responses either, isn't power creep always bad or the power creep in vanilla was good. I'm like, well, this is my point. And no, it's not. So I, I felt like I didn't really do a very good job explaining it. <laughs> but uh, that's something I, I may redo in the future. I think it depends on the extent of the power creep. I mean, with the way that the game is designed now, 
old raids, you know, mm -hmm. like, you, you know how I think Asmund has said this, you play the patch, not the expansion. Gear is so... Mm -hmm. it, it doesn't have any longevity. You use it and then you lose it, and it doesn't have any real value outside Sorry, of the patch you're playing it in. Just there, there, are no, there are no iconic pieces. I bet most people that play Legion right now couldn't actually name from memory one piece of gear they're wearing. Even if you play the game every day, I doubt you could even name one piece of gear you're wearing. I mean, I play this game 70 hours a week. I can't name one piece of gear that, I, that I'm wearing right now. It doesn't have any value to me. Like in vanilla WoW, because gear, because the way the power creep was established and the way, or, or it was so much uh, less than it, than it is in retail, and the way that even gear from Molten Core had value into AQ40 and even some pieces into Nax, with every class there were these very iconic, yeah. nameable, recognizable, pieces and it really really felt good like this gear had value it had longevity it had a it had a piece of like not not lore but like 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 player like i don't, I don't even know like like infamy it's yeah like exactly i know exactly pieces. what you're talking about yeah yeah, yeah. like ash candy like that yeah you put emotes in chat right a piece like that yeah um, yeah. yeah yeah no yeah. no doubt i mean you see like uh i mean crap like onslaught girdle right ash candy like you said i mean i don't even I don't even play a caster, but I see a, a caster running around with like staff shadow flame. I'm like, oh frick, right? Mm -hmm. Like, it, it's the thing. It's like you see you see these items and they mean something. Uh, like you said, I'm 100 percent on the same page. 100 percent. Can't I, I can't really name anything. Nothing really is, uh, at least in the current state of the game, nothing is really iconic as a powerful piece. Uh, the only yeah. things that the only things that are iconic are as cool looking pieces for transmog, not. You're right. Yeah. I, I brought this point up on stream the other day, and someone in chat said, oh, well, you must not be a mythic rating. It's a mythic rating. Uh, everyone has their bis list memorized, and everyone knows what their gear is. But, you know, imagine that might be 10% of the player base, like hardcore mythic raiders that, that can do that. In Vanilla WoW, that was 100% of the player base. Yeah. Everyone knew the iconic pieces. Yeah. So that's that's the point I'm trying to make. Which is, the, yeah, I mean, that's the whole thing, because, like, we've said it before, like, uh, you know, uh, none of us, none of us, well, you, you've technically mythic rated a little bit, but... Um, <laughs> <laughs> Technically, <laughs> one <Yeah>. of eleven. <laughs> but like, we're we're not mythic raiders, right? But th the point is, is that it doesn't matter, right? So whether it's a more casual player, I mean, dude, freaking, you're level, you know, seventeen hunter or whatever, and you're you're running around in Iron Forge or in Darnassus, and then you you see some guy in in full, uh, you know, full judgment gear, right? He's got an ash candy, and you're like, frick, I know exactly what that is, right? I know exactly what that is. That's a dude, you know, that's a real dude. And uh, I don't know. I mean, like, uh, you you do have different appearances for like you have the sets, and there's like the things like there's like the mythic chosen set, for example, and there's there's stuff like that. I get it, but uh, you you see that, and it's all for transmog. It's not about the power of the item. It's about the look of the item, and that's that's where the real difference comes in to me. And and I don't I don't know. I don't think that's as cool. Absolutely. I, I feel like one of the big problems with today's item design and, and item progression is it's not at all about the item. Every item might be, it might as well be an unnamed stat stick. The only, the only mm -hmm. thing that matters is the eye level of the item. It's just eye level. Is this going to boost my eye level? Yes. Okay. I'm going to put it on. The name, like it, it's not a big deal. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that's a problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, we, we've talked about a lot of different things, but like you see the effect that LFR has on the game. Like, you know, a lot of people, you know, some people think that we, we bash LFR needlessly, but just that one feature has caused everything you just heard. Power creep, you know, losing value in items, um, content not being as interesting to pursue because you've already seen the final boss before you get to the difficulty that's actually challenging. Like, all of these things are affected by LFR, and whether or not it gets removed, uh, I guess we can't really say, mm -hmm. but definitely seeing Blizzard kind of take a step back into that direction, kind of nullify some of the... Uh, some of the power that these auto grouping tools have in the game. Uh -huh. I think that's a good thing. I think it's far more like classic. And if this is just the first step, I'm very excited for it. Mm -hmm. And, um, but yeah, speaking of, of changing how quests work, uh, they actually are reintroducing elite quests into Battle for Azeroth. Mm -hmm. uh, for those that didn't play vanilla, elite quests or group quests were essentially quests that required you to group up with other people because you would be challenging an elite mob or a set of elite mobs. And uh, oftentimes they require three to five people. Um, I haven't seen an elite quest in the game since Cataclysm. And actually a lot of them were taken out post vanilla, even in Burning Crusade, a lot of the elite quests were removed. So it's very interesting to see these quests come back. Some iconic ones in vanilla, like the Morladeen quest, mm -hmm. the, uh, the game hunting quests uh, at the Nessingwary camp. 
but a lot of other elite quests too. How do you feel about this, S fan? How do you feel about elite quests coming back into the game? Uh, I think it's cool. I mean, I think it's cool. I think the quest should have uh, big rewards, whether it's a lot of XP or whether it's cool items. Um, that's because that's kind of how it was in, in Vanilla WoW. The uh, I actually didn't even know until you mentioned this because you you mentioned this to me before the show that or not before but but you like you know earlier in the past you mentioned this to me I, I didn't even know they were bringing elite quests back uh, I think again putting players in a situation where if they want to do all the quests if they want to do this they want to do that uh, people are achievement hunting now so people are going to be in a situation where if they want to get all their achievements like for you know, get all the quests done in a certain zone or whatever that they're going to have to be forced into a situation where they have to find a group for this and uh, they're gonna they're gonna you know, be in a situation where they're going to have the potential to make friends, whether they like it or not, right? <laughs> so, like, yeah. you know, go 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 play with everybody else. Uh, I think that's good. I mean, just thinking of, like, you know, you mentioned a few iconic ones. Whenever I think of Elite Quest, I think of the chain from, uh, I, I think you get it in Stormwind, but you're going up to the Alterac Mountains, and you have to kill the ogres, and it's, like, the princess and the the heart. and the, you, guys, you guys know what I'm talking about? What's that quest called? There's a lot of XP, but it's yeah. really long. Yeah, uh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, and uh, that is... Uh, you know, stuff like that to me is like, I remember I got that quest at like, I don't know, like whatever the earliest level is you can get at like 30 or 32 or something, but I couldn't actually complete it until like, I think 38, because it took me so long to, to try and find people to, uh, to to basically do it with. I don't know, I thought it was cool. I, I think stuff like that's cool and like I felt really good whenever I did, uh, whenever I did that quest and I remember it, you know. I don't really remember a whole lot of quests that I've done in, in Retail WoW in recent years, you know. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't really know how the elite quests are going to play out in in, uh, in BFA. If you'll be able to like spec pro and solo it or what, I don't know how it's going to play out. But in theory, you know, any 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 activity, elite quests or whatever it might be, that incentivizes you know coordination, teamwork, communication. Hey, can you help me do this quest? I'll help you do. Like that's really really good. That's really mm -hmm. good. And the game has been lacking stuff like that for a long time. Absolutely. <laughs> and when you run into these elite monsters in the world, it kind of reminds you how big the world is and how small you are. Like uh, on the Horde side in the beta right now, uh, th there's an elite quest at uh, in that jungle zone, whatever it's called, and you have to kill a bunch of dinosaurs. And like each dinosaur is an elite dinosaur. It, it kind of gives you that Fell Reaver moment when you pass one of these dinosaurs and it aggro's you, and you're like, oh crap, dude, this thing's gonna kill me, and, and you basically die. You know, yeah. it, it just it makes the world feel a little bit more dangerous. And the idea of having to group up with people take down these worldly challenges again i think that's really cool and it encourages that kind of social behavior yeah um uh real quick i just yeah. i just want to take a i just want to take a chance to uh remind you guys if you guys haven't already uh please follow please follow stay safe or tips and stay safe uh, i posted their links in the chat tips out baby and stay safe tv uh follow them on twitter follow them on youtube follow them on twitch of course uh, you guys can check out their streams there, and you know we're we're all we're all classic boys. That's what we like to talk about. We like to we like to talk classic. We like to talk vanilla. Um, so just real quick, I want to mention if you guys haven't already, please take the time to do that. Again, I, I posted their uh, I posted the links to their channels in uh, in chat right there. So there's that. Thank you so, very much, man. Yeah, yeah guys, I appreciate it. Hey, do you guys want to talk about this? Is one of my this is my favorite. Actually, this is my favorite piece of content in Vanilla WoW, and it's questing. I love leveling and questing mm -hmm. more than anything else. The rating's fine, PvP is good, but leveling in Vanilla is my favorite piece, and I think that's the case because of how open-ended and non-linear it is. And for the last couple expansions, questing and leveling has been very. I mean, act actually, like everything from Cata to Legion has been very, very linear, and you haven't like you have to do every quest in a very certain specific order, right? And one thing I've noticed, I haven't played much in the beta, but I did play a lot on the alpha. I leveled up twice on the alpha up to 120, uh, the BFA alpha. It is a lot more, it's not quite as you know open-ended as Vanilla WoW, but it is a lot more open-ended than we've seen for the last couple expansions. What do you guys okay. think about that? Well, I, I haven't done the leveling myself yet. I, I got like a couple levels in, I was just kind of like doing my thing, but uh, I think that's something that's promising. Do you, do you know a little bit more tips? Yeah, uh, so basically how it works now, you can no longer get to level cap by just doing the main storyline quests. You actually kind of have to go out of your way to, to explore, I guess, a little bit and do some of the side quests. Um, I think it's really cool. I think, again, it incentivizes the exploration and it creates uh, opportunity for more replayability. I think uh, basically since Wrath of the Lich King, the game has obviously been a lot more alt friendly, so naturally people are gonna roll alts. But even on your mains, I just think it's very exciting to kind of have a, a non-scripted quest experience where you kind of just go around, do whichever side quests you want to do, 
And me personally, I've always appreciated side quests a little bit more than like the big storyline. I think it's a lot more interesting to help some farmer find his daughter and like, you know, in some random cave and just kill the yetis in the cave than it is to like destroy this like crazy dragon that you have no connection to. So I think it's really engaging. I like the idea of questing being just kind of an adventure and not so much a scripted on rails experience. Um, I think it's good. Again, it's a baby step, uh, but the side quests are there. And if that's something that's elaborated on in the future, that's awesome, man. I, I, I love where the game mm -hmm. seems to be going uh, because that direction is kind of back more towards the classic way. And I think that's really cool. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, you know, and, and speaking of which, you know, being out in the world, one thing I want to talk about is world PvP and the the uh, resurrection. I, that that's what it is. It's because it, it was totally dead, in my opinion. World PvP was totally dead in Retail WoW, and uh, I think with the addition of uh, I think with the addition of War Mode and just all the different changes they've made with templates, uh, they've made it to where. You know what what you do actually matters your gear choices matter there's not an insane amount of uh there's not an insane amount of power creep i think that there is again you're 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 introducing the retail wow player base to or maybe even not introducing if people have played for a long time but but you're giving people a taste of of how classic feels a little bit I mean, I, we did city raids yesterday on my stream, and we went, we got the Black War Bear or whatever, we did the Fort Alliance achievement, and it was so much fun. I and mean, it was some of the most fun that I've had since, since I started playing retail, you know, in years, actually. But um, that's the kind of stuff that you see in Classic WoW, right? You have world PvP, you'll have ganking groups, you'll, you'll go out and you'll do things together with people. And uh, I think that's something that's, again, really coming back. And whether it's the combat, you know, going back to, like, whenever we're talking about the GCD change and, and making it to where your decisions matter more and there's a lot more risk involved than, like, okay, I pressed the wrong button, I'm dead now, you know? Um, stuff like that. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's kind of giving, uh, it's giving people a taste. You know, if people, if people like that, like I said, they're going to really like Classic. They're going to really like how Vanilla feels, I think, if that's what people are uh, enjoying right now. Yeah, I really like Wormund. There's a couple annoyances I have, but I think in general it's really good. I like, uh, you can see this in Darkshire right now, the bounty system. I think bounties are a really cool idea. I like that a lot. Um, War Mode is fun. Oh, yeah. Now, the phasing that we've seen in War Mode, where oh, if, you, if you make a big raid group and some of your raid members, if you if it's, if it's it becomes too big for your shard or your phase, you'll have people in your own group that get phased out. So you can't even see people in your own group. That that can be really, really frustrating. And I've, I've encountered a lot of problems with that. I also, this might be an unpopular opinion. I don't know but I wish they would disable flying in war mode. I think that yes. would really, really incentivize and hammer home. Just ha like the, that would increase the amount of people you see running around. Get rid of flying in war mode. It'd be really exactly. interesting. Yeah, I mean, flying just, it kills every element of world PvP. Just being able to mount up and get away. It's like, what's the freaking point? So, but, yeah. well, this is what I have to say about that actually. And, I, and I, I think it'd be really cool. I think it'd be really cool to not be able to fly, but they've, I'm sure they've thought about this. Like, I mean, I would think that this is something that has come up. Is not being able to fly something that would be so cumbersome to too many players that they would just decide to not play in war mode? I, 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 think, I think that's something that they've probably thought of, I, and that's something I would really like to see. I wish they would just hot fix it in. Honestly, I wish they would just hot fix it in, in the pre-patch, and just say for a week, no flying in war mode. I think that'd be something that'd be super interesting to see and just see, I mean, people are going to complain, but I just think it'd be super interesting to see how the world plays out. Now, they did add in the, the netomatic projector, which is a lot like the, um, what's it called? The, the engineering uh, turns you into a leopard gnome. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. In, in Vanilla WoW, it's, uh, it's a lot like that, except you have the like netomatic 5000, I think is what it is. You get it from PvP and BFA. And you cast it on people, you shoot a net, and knocks them off their mount. If they're flying, they take falling damage. I shot somebody out of the air yesterday, dropped to the ground, he died. It was, it was so satisfying. I was so happy. But yeah. um, I, I don't know. That's, Maybe that's their Band-Aid fix to that. I don't know. I think, I think it is a Band-Aid. And like, yeah. I, I think the flying thing is a big problem. I was going to say, like, that's, that's a good thought process. That's something you need to consider. You know? Maybe they probably had that thought. If we remove flying, we'll just no one use war mode. I think not having flying would be so worth it that it would like they, they should heavily incentivize using war mode. Like if that means 100% bonus XP when you're yeah. questing, or about another 100% bonus world quest reward, like 
just just to not have flying that would be worth it in my opinion yeah i think that's actually a really good idea just like make it insane like you'd, you'd feel stupid and not go in war mode right yeah right absolutely yeah. it would be pvp madness man it'd be mayhem yeah. and it'd be so fun it'd be really yeah. good actually <laughs> dude i would be... <laughs> go ahead sorry sorry there should be a stark difference between each mode like war mode should feel very different from normal mode mm -hmm. because pvp servers felt very different from pve servers back in the day Mm -hmm. Like, if you were on a PvP server in vanilla, you could not roll uh, two of the same faction. You can't have characters on both factions on the server. On top of that, the second you hit, you know, Hillsbrad, STV, whatever zone, you're just in a complete war mode. Like, you are in war mode, for real. And uh, you just end up hating the enemy faction so much. Yeah. And uh, if, they, if they turned war mode into, like... I guess a place where those people that love that rivalry, that love that hatred can kind of just like yeah. have an outlet. I think that'd be really, really cool. The more the more differences between the two, the better. Yeah. Well, and this is something that in the retail game, so so I think faction pride is is relatively dead. Not 100%, but it's kind of dead in, yep. in retail WoW. I mean, you have people like they're trying to arena at a high level. They have horde characters. They have alliance characters. They, they have to play specific races to get specific uh, racial abilities. Um, and and stuff like that. You know, you go into RBGs. You're in alliance. You're in an alliance. You're on the alliance, but you're on the horde side for the RBG because you have two alliance teams queued against each other. Same thing for you know you have two alliance teams queued against each other. Um, it kind of it kind of takes you out of that a little bit. It, it kind of kills the faction pride. There's not the difference of like paladins are only alliance, shamans are only horde. Um, I, I think a bunch of this stuff, and it's a lot of little things that kind of add into uh, or kind of add up to. Uh, killing off faction pride and uh, again something that's kind of frustrating but hopefully this is the kind of thing that they think about you know orcs versus humans horde versus the alliance battle for azeroth i think they they've started to move the pieces back a little bit and more in the direction of warcraft and what warcraft is and uh i think that's a really good sign to i think it's a good sign for classic and i've said it before um the more th the more people that are intrigued by Classic, the better, right? There's more people playing it. The more people play it, the more money Blizzard makes. The more money Blizzard makes, the more support they're going to have for it. The more they're going to invest in it. And uh, I think that's good for all of us Vanilla fans. That's really, really, really good. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And uh, on the subject of PvP, one of the other things that they're bringing back, and I think a lot of people that PvP a lot are going to be happy about this, is the return of PvP currency gear. So yep. this... We're not actually going too far back here. We're going back to WAD. I mean, obviously, since the inception of, like, vanilla, basically, uh, there was always, like, some kind of currency-based gear, some vendor-based gear. Um, the High Warlord gear and the ranking gear in vanilla was vendor-based. But uh, but they're bringing back vendor-based gear for the first time since, I guess, WAD. Uh, they took it away in Legion, and they replaced it with the templates and, and that whole RNG-based system and the lockboxes. But they're bringing it back. And... Um, even though it wasn't that long ago that they took it away, it's still a step back uh, in the previous direction. Mm -hmm. What do you guys think about PvP gear? Like, obviously the classic PvP system is heavily criticized, but, but what do you think about it? Like, what do you think about the change? What do you think about currency-based gear versus random-based gear? I hated how it was in Legion. How if you do a BG or a Q and Arena, you get, maybe you get a piece of gear, it might tighten for or, you know, maybe you get it, maybe you don't. That's yeah. that's so non-rewarding. I what, what I liked, like, personally, I really liked the Burning Crusade and Wrath model where you could formulaically, you know, you could plan, okay, in two weeks with this arena rating, I'll have enough points to buy this piece of gear. It's something you can strive for. It's a sense of accomplishment. And with, it, it was just like pulling a, like a little lottery lever, right? Every time you queued an arena or did a, or did a battleground in Legion, it's like, oh, am I going to get the bonus gear? Nope, I didn't get the bonus gear. It, it was, it wasn't rewarding or incentivizing yeah. at all. Yeah, and and you know, again, it's something else. Like I, I didn't know, uh, I didn't know they were doing this either. But this is something that that I like too. I like the ability to to choose. I like the ability to make decisions. Yep. So, yep. I mean, I, I I didn't even know. I didn't even know until until again you mentioned that earlier tips, but. Um, I think that's something that's good. I think that's something that's really good. The um, and that's the thing. I mean, that's I, I obviously I'm excited for classic, but I'm excited for BFA too because of this. And you know, for the first time in years, right? Because you know, you're you're starting to see things that it's it's shifting a little bit in, in more of the direction of uh, I I mean I I personally like it, right? Uh, but hopefully, a lot of other people do as well. So. 
Yeah, right. and t talking about uh, the gear system of vanilla, because I kind of skipped over that, but the gear system of, in vanilla, the gear is so good. I have no problem with that gear requiring a huge time investment. Like it's not required. It's not make or break. Your guild is still going to clear the raids if not everyone has it. But it is a huge reward for a huge time investment and, and, and dedication effort in your life. I'm fine with that. Yeah, you're talking about um, the PvP gear. The PvP gear in vanilla, yeah. Yeah, I'm you sure. have to get a certain rank to buy it. Yeah. Well, and it, it was a level of prestige that came with that, right? Uh, yeah. So whether it's, you know, let's let's take it a step. Let's let's go to Burning Crusade, right? I remember you had your you had your arena shoulders, right? You had your arena shoulders and it's like, okay, that's a real dude. Like that's that's a that's a that's a guy. Like that's somebody who can play. That's somebody who earned it. Uh, and there's a reason for that. There's a reason why I remember back to Burning Crusade, there's a reason why they had the rating requirements. 1800 I believe was the weapon. And or you know what they changed it a couple times, didn't they? Wasn't it like eighteen fifty and then twenty two hundred for weapon and then shoulder, and then they changed uh, the shoulder to two K. I, I can't remember. Yeah, in BC, didn't didn't they have they it like twenty two hundred shoulders for season one, and they they pulled it back? I don't know if it ever dropped down. I don't remember. That, yeah. was, that was a long time ago. Yeah, or maybe it was season four. Either way, either way, um, they they had a higher rating requirement for you. You had a good one for the weapon because the weapon is the single. Uh, biggest upgrade that you can get to your set, right? The single biggest upgrade that you can get to your set is your weapon. Um, then your shoulders are one of the pieces that sticks out the most right alongside your helmet, right? Some people hide their helmet. So they made the most, uh, the highest requirement piece as far as your rating goes, your shoulders, because there's a level of prestige that comes with it and that shows that, that shows up more. Like your your paladin, you have your your season three shoulders. You got the big, you got the light coming off of it, and it looks nice. And it's like that for everybody, right? Shamans had that red set, uh, you know, recolors the tier gear, but but it was cool, and, and that's something that uh, it really stood out whenever somebody had that. So, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. absolutely. Um, we actually did gloss over the final change right here. This is the final change that we've noticed that that kind of takes the game back into the direction of classic. Uh, the leveling difficulty. Now, technically, this didn't happen or didn't start in a Battle for Azeroth. This started in patch 7.3.5 recently in Legion. But uh, the scaling changes in BFA have also kind of added to this. And that is the leveling difficulty increasing dramatically. Um, yeah. I noticed this when we were doing Project 80 a couple months back. There were some quests that you just could not do solo, whether it be because of a bug or for the scaling or just the level difficulty changed. I don't know. But uh, leveling takes a lot longer now. Uh, the 1 to 15 takes like three times as long as it did before. And uh, beyond that, obviously, just leveling is just taking a lot more time. And mobs are doing a lot more damage to you and take a lot longer to kill now. Mm -hmm. How do you... No doubt. Yeah, what do you think about that? I mean, hopefully leveling is fun. But either way, I mean, I hope it's fun. But either way, the longer it takes, the, the more people will view it as content and not just, uh, it's a two day chore I have to do just so I can mm -hmm. finally play the game at max level. In Vanilla WoW, leveling was content. That was, you know, for some people, that was half of their entire Vanilla WoW experience, right? Or, or, or over half maybe, maybe they got to 16 and they didn't really do much. Leveling mm -hmm. was like a key piece of content. In fact, if anyone here is watching and they haven't played Vanilla WoW before, one of the biggest pieces of advice I can give you going into Classic WoW is like seriously enjoy leveling. It is a very fun and enjoyable piece of Vanilla WoW that shouldn't be looked at through the lens of retail WoW is just like an inconvenience. It is actually very, very fun, and I, I want you guys all to enjoy it. Get yeah. the most out of it. I, I actually have big beef with uh, with leveling and retail WoW, to be honest. <laughs> I, I do. Uh, I, I think leveling and retail WoW is, uh, it, it doesn't know what it is. And uh, and I, I'm like, this is coming from somebody who, I'm a classic guy, I'm a vanilla guy, and I'm really, really happy with the overall state of the game right now in, in Retail WoW, which I'm actually personally surprised about. Because um, a lot of people were talking like, oh, BFA's gonna suck, this and that, but so far in the pre-patch, I, I, I really enjoy it. Now, I think with leveling right now, it, like I said, it doesn't know what it is, right? It's something that, the, the game is so top-heavy and it's so focused on, on 110 or uh, 120 and BFA. Uh, it's, it's so top heavy and it's so focused on the very end game content that you don't get the same sort of progression that you do in Vanilla WoW. Like, Stay Safe has mentioned before, leveling is like your favorite thing to do. Like, you, you, I, you have speed leveled multiple characters for fun. Just like get to level 40 and like, okay, we got my cutoff point. Um, now, I, I was never like that to where I enjoyed leveling that much, but at least whenever I level, 
I, I get the feeling of progression and you get small, you, you, you feel the uh, development of small wins. You feel the impact of small wins. That's what it's about. Vanilla WoW has a lot of small wins. Uh, over and over again, you level, you get one level, you get one talent point. So you take that one talent point, you get to choose where you put it. You put it somewhere else. Uh, whenever they added the new talent system, I go 15 levels before I can put in one talent point. In BFA, they didn't add a talent from 100 to 110 to 120, which is that's probably that's one of my one of my few gripes right now with with BFA. But uh, you're you're reducing, you're increasing the leveling time, so you're you're increasing the amount of time it takes to level without increasing the feeling of reward, without increasing the uh, you know without adding in those small wins. Uh, that's one of the things to me, and it's like, okay, well, you can't have one talent point for every level now. There's freaking 120 yeah. levels, right? I mean, what you just said right there. I'm sorry to interrupt. What you just mm -hmm. said right there contributes to this feeling of leveling is a waste of my time. Like you just want to get to max level as fast as possible in yeah. retail. It, the entire process feels just like a chore and waste of time. Yeah. And, and in vanilla wilds, like you said, there are small incremental. Every level get a talent point. Maybe mm -hmm. you'll get a like it's you hit it nail, uh, nail on the head, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, w I was gonna say the same thing, honestly. Like. It's a difference between like just having that growth while you're leveling makes leveling far more interesting than not having it. The problem with slowing down the leveling right now in retail, it feels like they're slowing it down. It's taking longer, but you're not getting any growth out of it. You don't, you're not feeling that progression, like you said, as fan. So mm -hmm. it feels more frustrating than anything else. Like, even though it's, it's kind of calling back to what vanilla was, it's missing that key element that made vanilla leveling what it actually was and, and right. why it was so important. But uh, again, it's baby steps. It, it's kind of a step back in that original direction. Um, and you know, all of these things, they're, they're baby steps. I mean, none of these things are gonna make the game, they're not gonna transform the game into vanilla overnight, but mm -hmm. they have kind of set the directional compass backwards rather than forwards. And I think us here on the Classic Cast can agree that's a good thing. But, mm -hmm. um, but, but it's time to kind of look ahead, I guess. I mean, so, is this a sign of things to come? Uh, yeah, I mean, and that, that's kind of like the, the point of the whole podcast here today, guys, is, is we really wanted to look at some of the changes in BFA. And uh, again, for those of you guys who missed the intro, uh, look at some of the things that they've, they've changed going into BFA and kind of like turn the ship around, turn the compass around, and uh, kind of go back to a little bit more of a classic feel and, and how that bodes for, for the future of Warcraft as a whole. Uh, a little bit different podcast today, but I think it's it's relative to BFA coming out soon and, and the recent 8.0 patch. Uh, for those of you who are playing Retail WoW, uh, for those of you who are who are vanilla guys exclusively, I think that's something that even you should be excited about because it's going to uh, it's going to increase the hype from uh, from another uh, from another market essentially for classic if uh, if people really are enjoying BFA, I think. But uh, but yeah, I think I think it's good. I think it's good. You know, I kind of said it there, but uh, but yeah, I think it's something that is good. If, uh, if it increases the hype for classic, if it if it makes people more intrigued, I think it's good. Yeah, we have to see if they follow through and if these changes are well received by the player base. I mean, classic WoW. We've talked about this before. But if classic WoW is really popular and blows up, uh, classic WoW I think has the capacity to change retail, like future retail WoW game design and also non blizzard games and there might be other mmos or other games that are taking hints or cues from classic mm -hmm. wow original you know 2000, 2003 game design and like it could sort of change change a lot of things um but yeah they, they have to follow through right and it, we'll, we'll we'll see how it goes mm -hmm. but right now things things are looking good i really i really do think so let's say classic is a resounding success it's just exactly what we imagine and more do they change the game to become more like classic or not? And if they do, how many expansions does it take for them to implement those changes? Is it something that can happen within an expansion's time or is it something that it'll progressively roll out maybe three expansions down the line from now? I mean, what do you guys think about that? Um, you're, ta are you're talking about in retail? Yeah. So so in retail, if they like, if they take it to where it's basically just like, it feels just like classic and it's like, 10 expansions in the future is basically what you're saying. Yeah, well, first and foremost, will they make it just like Classic if Classic is super successful and for whatever reason retail starts to fall off? And if they do, how long will it take for them to get up to that point? Oh, yeah, okay, I see what you're saying. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Do they, uh, do they change the retail version of the game in the, uh, in the case, uh, whether likely or unlikely, 
in the case that classic is it ends up being more popular than retail um that's something that's really interesting i mean at the end of the day if they do a shared sub they're doing a shared sub and the game is what it is i think more of the question comes if i i don't know if they'll ever do that i think it's more likely that you'll see like a classic plus if that's the case and you start seeing 1.13 1.14 and so on uh post nax content on like a on a new fresh server Maybe, maybe you roll through. Maybe the first iteration, they go that and they do Burning Crusade. They do it again, you go that, and then you go to uh, you go to 1.13 and on content where you'll actually get to go to Hyjal. You'll get to do Karazhan. You'll get to go to Oldham. Uh, Grim Batol, um, Deathwing's Lair is in Hyjal, or presumably it's Deathwing's Lair in Hyjal. Um, yeah. I, I, think, uh, I think that ends up being a little bit different discussion because you can go so many ways with that. I think it's not likely that they, uh, that they totally end up changing... The, the retail game to match uh, to match classic, but that kind of falls in line with my original, just kind of how I think. Like you still have two markets. It's just that it's like a Venn diagram, right? It, it overlaps yeah. a little bit. Mm -hmm. I think they could do small changes uh, to retail in the future, but like in order to answer this question, we need to we need to make a list of things that things in retail that are that are differentiating it from vanilla WoW. So you have like raid finder, dungeon finder, um, you have like auto group finder stuff, you have cross realm, you have phasing, you have sharding. You have transmog. Like, are these things that they would ever gut from the game? And I think these core elements in retail, they won't ever get rid of. Yeah, it's now, too small far gone. changes, it's too far gone. Small changes like this, like, you know, tweaking leveling or, you know, returning currency to PvP gear, stuff like that, I think they could do, but just like these giant fundamental pieces of retail out today, I don't I don't see them going anywhere. I don't yeah. think so. Yeah. yeah, I agree. Like all the all the uh, the list that we mentioned today, they're all superficial changes. They're all surface level changes. None of them really affect the core of the game or like the core principles of the game. Uh, the only one that I think is actually pretty significant, or the, the one that's very significant, I should say, is the removal of auto grouping in World Quest. Not necessarily because of its direct effect now, but the impact that that precedent could have down the line. I mean, I. Uh, I'm usually a pessimist, but for whatever reason, this one I hope it's a sign of things to come. Although, mm -hmm. uh, although we won't know, but I agree. There's just too many fundamentals, man. Mm -hmm. Too many fundamentals. So, um, guys, we're uh, we're we're a little bit shorter on time than we normally are this uh, today, this week on Classic Cast. Uh, so we want to go ahead and move into a Q&A. We're going to go ahead and move into Q&A. Uh, if you guys have any questions, uh, you guys can feel free to tweet at us. Uh, tweet, at, tweet at us, hashtag ClassicCast. Type questions in the chat. Let's go ahead and take some questions from the chat first, and then, uh, and then we'll go to Twitter for some questions uh, before I have to go. Uh, again, just one more time, if you guys haven't yet, please, please, please follow twitch.tv slash tipsoutbaby. Twitch.tv slash stay safe TV and uh, you know follow this channel as well. We're all classic guys. Uh, and again, uh, our YouTube channels as well. Your guys' YouTube channels are, are the same. Tips out, baby, stay safe TV. Uh, mine is the same as well, S Fan TV. And uh, this classic cast, if you missed the beginning of this podcast before we move into QA, uh, <clears throat> we'll be moving or I'll be posting this uh, on YouTube in the next couple of days. Yeah, yeah, sorry, I'm I'm growing boy. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, no, so, so let's go ahead and move into a Q&A, and uh, I'll go ahead and uh, pick out the first question here. Um, mm -mm -mm -mm. Um, okay, this is, I, I think this is a good question. I, I, like, we don't know the answer to this, right? But I think this is something interesting to bring up. Uh, Paraladin says, will Field of View be fixed in Classic? And for those of you guys who don't know, Classic WoW was made, Vanilla WoW, the 1.12 client, all this stuff was made at a time whenever the standard was not these, these nice 16 by 9, even 21 by 9, these, these nice 4K monitors. And a lot of people were using these 4 by 3 CRTs still. And field of view, basically meaning how much stuff you can fit on your screen, uh, is designed for a 4 by 3 monitor. So whenever you play in 16 by 9, if you play, if you open up the 1.12 client right now, and you and you log into your character, and then you take your retail character and you put them in the exact same spot, and I think this is something that they did in Wrath of the Lich King. I think in Wrath of the Lich King they fixed this. But if you were to take another character and put them both in the exact same spot, stacked right on top of each other, you'll notice how much more stuff fits on your screen. You're not necessarily zoomed out, but there's just more on the screen. Like your your monitor is covering a greater area. Um, is this something? 
Is this something that uh, is going to be fixed? I don't know. Is this something that's going to be changed? I don't know. Uh, this is one of those things that whenever we talked about, uh, we've talked about this in the other in the other podcast. Whenever they said that they're basically going to strip down the current game, this is one of those things that I, I wouldn't be surprised to see them basically uh, adjust for the times, accommodate for the times, and and there's just nicer monitors now, and uh, it, it just make it compatible with the current mm-hmm. monitors that you have now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it, uh, it sounds like it's going to affect like things like world PvP a lot, probably. Um, Devil sore farming. I mean, basically, you can see more now, right? That that's what's going on on like the modern client. You can see more on your on your screen. Is that correct, S fan? Uh, yeah, basically. Yep. Yeah. So I know recently they uh, they opened up that software engineering position, uh, whose goal is to kind of take the uh, the new client game and kind of graphically change it so it looks exactly like vanilla did back in the day, or at least those were the requirements of that position. Mm-hmm. Something like this, hopefully it would be covered by that position, but like you said, it might slip through. I mean, there's so many small things that are probably gonna slip through from the client down port that they'll probably have to address during beta if they're significant enough. Mm-hmm. Um, I hope they do that. I hope they have a long enough beta to kind of address all these issues, but uh, we'll see. Yeah. I was gonna say, imagine if they just take their low resolution gameplay for back in the day and, like, and they stretch it out on your monitor and your wide monitor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so bad. yeah. <laughs> yeah, that'd, be, that'd be pretty bad. Yeah, that'd be pretty bad. Um, I, I see a question here about transmog. Do you think that cla- that uh, transmog would ruin or have a negative impact on Classic WoW? I, I have a strong opinion, but what do you guys have to say about that? Um, Actually, go ahead, go ahead, Tips. I, I, I do have a good opinion on this, too. So believe ahead. it or not, I don't think transmog would affect Classic very much at all. And the reason I say that, in Classic WoW, wh- one of the great parts about Classic, when it came from like a progression standpoint, you didn't just progress from a power standpoint. Your numbers didn't just go up as you got higher level. Your gear starts to look better. Like an example is like in Scarlet Monastery, at like your mid-level 30s, that's like the first dungeon where the gear you get starts to look pretty cool. And then like as you get to the end game, you know, the end game gear looks pretty cool and the tier sets look even cooler. And you don't just get this power progression, you also get like a physical armor gear look progression. But that also happens in Classic. So even if transmog were in classic, of course, I don't want it to be in classic, but even if it were, I feel like nobody would use it because the gear that you get at the end game objectively looks better than the gear that you get in the early game. So the only way I can see people using transmog is uh, is like maybe to make their sets more uniform or something like that. But if somebody has tier two gear, you'd already know they're a good player. So even if they use transmog to complete their tier two set, just like visually, you already know they're a good player because they are in, you know, BWL mm-hmm. at the time and stuff like that. But I don't think Transmog would have that adverse of an effect on Classic, honestly. Yeah. So for me, uh, I, I actually disagree. Um, I disagree. I, I think that. Uh, I, so I'm a big, I'm a big, uh, I'm a big PvP guy, right? I'm a big PvP guy, and in Classic WoW and Vanilla WoW, uh, kind of going back to what we're talking about in Burning Crusade 2, there's certain things that stick out to you. And whenever you're looking at a player, right, I click on his portrait and I see him running at me and I see his helmet from the portrait. He might have his helmet hidden. I see his shoulders because they stick out. I see his weapon. And if I see an orc warrior and he's got his rank 14 shoulders and he's got his uh, high warlord's axe and if I see that guy coming at me, I can identify that guy and I can be like, frick, I'm, I'm, I'm about to get effed. Like, I got to be careful. You know what I mean? And this is one of those things that when it comes to PvP play, whenever it comes to competitive play, I, I think it really, really does uh, affect the gameplay from that perspective. I can look at a guy's gear and I can kind of, uh, as you become a more experienced player, you're able to decipher uh, how a guy's going to play, you're going to be able to, to predict how a guy's going to play, decipher his build, see how he does certain things. I mean, I, I've done it on stream before, and I, I know Paladins better than, than any other class, right? So I've watched old PvP videos of Paladins, and I've looked at their gear, I've seen what abilities they've used, I've looked at like how long their buff duration is, and, and, I, and I basically say, okay, this is their spec, boom, 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 right? And I'll, and I'll load up a talent calculator, and I'll show them what their spec probably is. And then at the end of the video, you know, videos I've never seen before, at the end of the video, it shows the spec, it shows the, the talent tree, and it's like 95 plus percent right. And it's like, you're, you're able to do that in vanilla WoW once you become an experienced enough player and, and really get to see 
what people are coming at you with. So, so I really, uh, I really do think transmog, transmog does affect the gameplay in a sense. I actually, yeah, in the PvP sense, I absolutely <coughs> agree with you, 100%. Um, it, that was a great point. Uh, in PvE mode or just like outside in the world, I just can't imagine people using transmog in vanilla. The game isn't really set up to reward people for using transmog because in general, I mean, gear, it just takes so long to get. Why would you transmog your gear at the end game if it took so long to get? And on top of that, it does look a lot more detailed than lower level gear. So that's I kind of how I look at it, yeah. I can tell you why. I mean, what are the most expensive transmogs in the game right now? They are empowered female transmogs, right? Those, and they're all from Vanilla WoW. <laughs> it, it would have it would have economic implications. It would have player behavior implications because you'd have transmog farming groups. It would it would mess up the economy. Um, and also, like, I, I think there's a big argument to be made for. It, have you ever heard the saying? In order to appreciate like the sunny days, you have to experience the rainy days, right? Mm. In order to appreciate looking like a badass you have to spend a lot of time looking like an idiot. And I want everyone to look like an idiot because that means like, who here, I remember I remember playing Burn Crusade and there was a warlock, my guild wasn't in Black Temple yet. There was mm. a warlock that would that would sit AFK in, in Shatrath and he was in full tier six. I was 12 years old. I went up and I, I took a screenshot. I screenshot his, I, I inspected him, I took a screenshot and I, I might as like, I, I looked at it like every day because it motivated, so, it motivated me so much to see this guy that looked so cool I look at myself and I look like a freaking idiot. Like that was one of my driving motivators to mm. play and be successful at the game. And if you have people transmogging, like, I don't know, I think I think it devalues the importance of gear. Transmog does a lot. I, I agree in general, like transmog devalues gear. I just can't find, like if I got, you know, tier three dreadnought, I cannot see myself ever transmogging that to like, you know what I mean, or something like I just, I just can't, you know. Mm -hmm. But but I, I do agree that like in general, in principle, I completely agree. Transmog is horrible for the game, but just the way vanilla functions, I, aside from PvP purposes, I can't really see it being a feature a lot of people would use. But maybe that's just me. Okay, uh, I kind of want to go to a little bit of Twitter, a little bit of Twitter here. Uh, let's start looking. And uh, okay, this is good. Uh, I, I want to hear what you guys think about this. Uh, this is from uh, Chris Tiber at Chris Tiber. Uh, hey, Chris. Do you think Do you think Darn Mill and South Shore will be the dominant world PvP battlefield in Classic like it was in Vanilla? Although Battlefield shifted to BRM and Silithus at times. What do you guys think about this? Can you repeat that question? Uh, do we think that Tarn Mill and South Shore is going to be the dominant world PvP battlefield in Classic, uh, mm -hmm. just like it was in Vanilla? And although Battlefields did shift to BRM and Silithus at times, kind of based on what patch and, and world events and stuff. I guess it depends on the honor system and when they, uh, when they include the honor system. If they launch with the honor system, mm -hmm. which is something that was kind of indicated in that water cooler update, then we might not see Terran Miller South Shore at all, at least not in the sense that it was back in the day. You'll still see it while you're leveling, because when you're in Hillsbrad, you're just going to come across the enemy faction. But, uh, but will it have that same, you know, everybody's there, everybody's farming honor in that location or PvPing in that location. Possibly not, depending on when they implement the honor system and when they implement BG. Hmm. Now, I, th I think it has a lot more to do with when there's BGs, because if there's an honor system, yeah. you know, in Vanilla, there was, for those of you that know, there, there was an honor system for a couple months and there were no BGs. And then a couple months later, they added BGs. So people wanted honor. Yeah, we got to rank up. What's mm -hmm. the best place that has the most uptime to farm honor? Well, uh, it was uh, Tarn, Tarn Milver South Shore. And so that's where people were. I think probably i think actually blackrock mountain is is a better pvp spot than that even um but yeah it depends on if there's an honor system and uh and of course if when bgs come out absolutely and then also it'll shift uh, it'll shift to uh to a dire mall as well who here's been running into dire mall to go to dire mall west or uh, something and there's a yeah. gang squad hiding around the corner oh so annoying man. dude i don't know how many times people were freaking late to raid myself included because we're getting their buffs at the last second and some freaking you know, whatever five man group is sitting there to kill one guy because they're just trying to scratch and claw for every single piece of honor they can get. Yep. They should get yep. dishonorable kills for that. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, for real. I mean, that's the game, right? That's the game. And uh, it's just, that's just the way it is. Like, it's, there's certain hot spots, right? I, I think the reason Tarn Mill, Terran Mill, whatever you want to call it, uh, I, I think there's a reason the, uh, the area between that and South Shore is so popular is there's a big range of levels that go there for quests. 
Uh, it's, a, it's a big area that you have to pass through, you know, if you're trying to get to Chilwin Point for the Alliance. You have the Undercity up here, and then you have Iron Forge. It, it's basically like, it's a little bit closer to the Undercity, but it, it's kind of like the midway point between the Undercity and Iron Forge. So it's a pretty active hub. It's a pretty active area. And just the fact that you have two Alliance and Horde towns uh, pretty close in proximity to one another, it, it just makes for like a good world PvP setup. And I, I don't know. I, I think it's going to be popular. It's something that's more popular while leveling. The thing is, at higher levels, if a higher level goes there, you're mostly going to be finding lower levels to kill them, and you're not really getting any honor for it. So usually, if you're doing it, you're just kind of just kind of doing it to kill. So like, <laughs> you're, you're out for blood. But like, a lot of times people are trying to grind honor, and then that's a case where they would be in, uh, like, like you said, stay safe, be in Dire Mall. Uh, being Black Rock Mountain, stuff like that, yeah. where they're going to know they're going to see higher levels who are worth more honor. Yeah, because people, mm -hmm. higher levels are going to naturally be there. They're trying to do their dungeon runs, or you'll, you'll mm -hmm. snipe a guild going to Black Rock Mountain, or go into a Molten Core or something like that. Yeah. There's a lot more high level traffic in those areas. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, uh, do you want any tips? Do you want to pick out a question? You haven't picked one out yet. Yeah, sure. Um, let's see. Uh, I'll, I'll take a minute if, if any of you guys see another one. I'm going to read some of these on Twitter real quick. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> okay, well, uh, Nays asked this question a couple times. Mm -hmm. uh, thoughts about adding arenas and RBGs as potential 1.13 content for PvP servers? Uh, well, I think if they do anything like... I think if they do anything to the game, it needs to be done to the game, right? Unless it's like a, a specific functionality of PvP versus PvE. Um, but as far as like adding arenas and RBGs and stuff go... In in like a classic plus, I don't think uh, I don't think that's the kind of thing that works for vanilla, right? Vanilla is vanilla, and uh, I mean RBGs to a little bit less extent, but it's kind of like what I was saying about Fraction Pride earlier, where you end up you end up getting matched against Alliance versus Alliance. Uh, but Arena is like you're you're basically just sitting there, you're you're sitting there and you're stuck inside of the city or you're, you're doing whatever you can and you're just uh, you're just not porting but you're queuing right you're queuing you go to an arena and you do your thing i know for me like whenever i'm doing arenas a lot of times i'm running in circles around dalaran uh, i'm not really being hyper productive outside of the arenas so i arena i talk to the chat whatever i i, I queue up whatever uh, and that's just what i do and if i'm not on stream i'm running around dalaran anyway and just talking to my teammates and having a good time so that's one of those things that whenever they add that into the game, hypothetically, if they were to add something like that into the game, you're taking away, you're taking people out, you're taking players out of the world, and you're putting them into this instance. You're putting them into whatever. So if people want to get honor, if people want to get whatever, they need to go out in the world. If they want to go farm mats for raid, if they want to go do herbalism, if they want to go do mining, whatever they want to do, they have to go out into the world. That's kind of the whole point of the deal. That's that's the whole point of the game is, is World of Warcraft, right? Um, yeah. you're, you're taking the world out of Warcraft, and, and uh, I think that's something that's uh, not particularly good for Classic WoW specifically. Yeah, right. Yeah. I'm not a big fan of queues. I mean, if you ask like 95% of people that are out in the something and well, hey, what are you doing? It's because of a it's because of a scarcity of resources. They're trying. They're on their way to a dungeon to get gear. They're trying to farm honor. They're uh, they're 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 farming mobs, or they're on a, on the way to a dungeon to go farm gold inside of a dungeon, or farming mobs in the open world. Scarcity of resources in Vanilla WoW is like a really, really big deal, especially scarcity of gold. And uh, that that desire, that constant grind is what gets people out and doing things and engaging with other players, engaging with, with the world around them as well. Mm -hmm. The exactly. second you add queues or stuff like that, I mean, this is a big problem in retail, you end up with people AFK in the city complaining they don't have anything to do. Mm -hmm. I, I completely agree. Yeah. Um, I've got a question here from Bryce Martin. Uh, but I kind of want to flip it on its head. He's asking, uh, what retail features would you be okay with Blizzard integrating into Classic WoW? I think I know the answer to that from you guys, but uh, let's flip it on its head. What what one Classic feature would you like to see in retail? And I kind of want to ask the chat that too. Like, what's yeah. the one Classic feature, the one vanilla WoW feature you guys would like to see in the modern game? And yeah, like, w what do you guys think? Hmm. If I had to pick one, I'd probably pick one raid difficulty, to be honest. One raid difficulty is a really good one. Uh, talent system is a good one. Now, you can't do it exactly like in Classic because there's too many levels. Uh, <laughs> the amount of levels 
the like, the amount of levels would be a good one. I think I think the concept of a level squish is uh, I don't think it's completely insane uh, in the future of retail WoW. I don't think that's something completely insane to do a level squish, but um, yeah, I, I think man, there's there's a lot to choose from. Um, talent tree is good one. Talent tree is good one. One raid difficulty is really good one. Go ahead. I would say get get rid of cross realm everything. I'd I'd rather have I'd mm. rather have four I'd rather have ten raid difficulties than have cross realm anything. Get rid of cross realm everything. No sharding, no phasing, no cross realm. That is the one most detrimental thing that they've done in this game, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think uh, I think that's a good one. Flying's another good one. There's a lot of good ones, man. There's a lot of good things in uh, or lack of flying, I should say, no flying. Uh, I don't know. All right, so is there gonna be flying on the new? Uh, on the new continents in BFA, or not I think at all? They're going to replicate. They're going to replicate the Legion system. Basically, no flying in the beginning. Then the Pathfinder Achiever progressively unlocks. I'm pretty sure. Right. Right. Yeah. So yeah, I think deep down, probably Blizzard, if they could go back in time, I bet they would have never added flying. I think they regret it. Like I really think they do. Mm -hmm. For the last three expansions, or last two plus BFA, uh, they're time gating it by a year or something. I, yeah. I think they've realized that it it really undermines a lot of people's interaction with other players, world PvP, with with the engagement with the world around them. I think they have done the most they can possibly do to get rid of it without people, you know, having riots in the street. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And people mm -hmm. are pretty. They're already pretty close when they announced uh, what they were going to do with Legion. I remember people being really oh, upset yeah. about it. But yep. yeah, I agree. I, I wish they never added it. Yep. I I hate it. I hate flying. <laughs> <laughs> It's scary, dude. You get you get a uh, for the heights. Not good. Not good. Yeah. What if what if you fall down? Yeah. <laughs> dude, you might with your freaking netomatic, dude. Sniping people out of there. That I, honestly, dude, in war mode, like that's I, that was one of the most exciting things that happened uh, in, in the last few days is seeing that warlock and just <laughs> freaking like I'm shooting skeet, dude. It was it was unreal. It was awesome. But uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah. Uh, let's see. So we have. Uh, Let's do let's do one or two more questions. One or two more questions. Uh, let's let me, let me check Twitter. Let's take a look here. Tweet at hashtag classic cast guys. By the way, if you mm -hmm. want to answer your question. Mm -hmm. um, if they added cross realm BGs, do you think they should have cross realm? Oh, sorry, if they. Do you think they'd have? Do they, do you think that they should have cross realm from the get go or added later on? Uh, they should do it if they're going to do it. Do it how they did it, in my opinion, uh, in vanilla, where they added cross realm in patch 1.12. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I think anything cross realm, even cross realm BGs, really serves to undermine and degrade uh, any sense of server community. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I think uh, so. I, I have my beef with with cross realm, and uh, just so people know, I think this is a common misconception. Cross realm was added in patch 1.12. Like the battle groups were added in 1.12, and mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's, so it's technically vanilla. Uh, but that's kind of like the one thing that I, I really hope we don't see, and uh, more realistically, don't have to see. We talked about it in one of the really early classic casts. Maybe it was the the first or second one even. And uh, Stay Safe brought up a really good point because I, I'm I, I do not like cross realm. Right? I, I think it's something that it's good for it's good for streaming. Right, I, I, it's good for streaming. You can play with other streamers. You can do big viewer raids. People who are on whatever server can can come up and queue up and play with you. I get that, but uh, as far as is it something that's good for the game and the environment of the game, the community of the game? I think that uh, I think that's something that uh, maybe not so much. But Stay Safe brought up the fact that it might be a necessary evil. Uh, it's something that you might have to deal with if servers start to die out because that's essentially what happened. There were servers that started to die, got really low population, or they became very, very alliance or horde heavy. And what they ended up having to do was because alliance was getting instant queues and horde was getting like freaking 30 minute queues. They were like, okay, well, we're going to come up with battle groups and take the highest, the, the most heavily populated horde servers and match them up with heavily populated alliance servers and mix and match so that everyone has like an equal amount of queues. Could it be a necessary even, evil? We'll see. I even mean, then, I would I would prefer server merges over cross realm. I would, I, I would I really, too. You might lose your name. Yeah. That's scary. But I, I think you're right. I, I would too. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I definitely prefer server server merges. I think Blizzard is scared to merge servers because of the negative connotation. Um, it's like, oh my god, is the game dying? Sort of thing, you know. 
Uh, I know a lot of games in the past that I followed have been very, you know, scared of merging servers for that very reason. It's not a marketing, it's not very marketable. Right. But That's like everybody knows Classic is going to do well. And like, it's okay, just merge the servers if they're dying. I, I don't understand. Like with World of Warcraft, there is no negative connotation. Servers are naturally going to lose population. Blizzard, just merge the servers if they're dying, please. Like, I don't understand why it's so complicated. Yeah. But um, to the question about cross your own BGs, uh, I'm in the same camp with, with Stay Safe and S fan. I'm not a fan. But I, I've been talking to some to some PVPers recently, some high level vanilla PVPers, and they're actually the, the total opposite. They're in the completely different direction. They say they want cross realm, some of them from day one, or battle groups or whatever. And the reason they say they want that is not just because of queue times, but also because of things like queue dodging and, and people queuing up and dodging other pre-mates to, to make sure that, you know, essentially they can deny other pre-mates honor by dodging certain queues. And it actually has a very negative impact on the game. Um, now, this could be a case of, of something affecting the top 1% of players and shouldn't necessarily be applicable to everybody else. But I do think it's an interesting topic. I mean, the idea of, you know, if you have a 3,000 population server and just a couple of pre-mates going at it, you know, could, could a couple of pre-mates queue dodging just destroy the entire PvP system? Is that something you want to make it to live? I, I don't know. I don't know much about the subject, but uh, it's definitely it's an interesting topic of discussion. Mm -hmm. right. No, I think that's good. I think that's really good. Um, let's take uh, let's take one last question. Let's take one last question. Uh, do you guys have anything that sticks out to you? I see a question about uh, eight debuff slots. Do we think eight debuff slots or 16 later on is a healthy mechanic? Uh, the question is worded. What do you guys think uh, about that? Healthy I've as far a... as like changing it goes? Like mid mid game? Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what he means by that. Yeah. Um, I mean, uh, I, think, I think that's something that is probably not going to get changed. I think that... It does affect the game, but they are going off of 1.12 base, and we'll see how it goes. But uh, I think it's more than likely they'll come out with 16 debuff slots right off the bat. I mean, it, it just goes goes back to, I've been saying this for months, the importance of the classic beta, alpha, whatever you want to call it, I, I think it's huge. I think everyone's like, well, why do you need it? If, if they're saying they're going to keep it as no changes as possible, why do you need it? Well, I, I think they absolutely need it because they're going to have to test stuff, make sure everything's up and running properly. But also stuff like getting real legitimate data, right? Okay, guys, this week, you know, whoever's in the alpha, whoever's in the beta, you know, whatever it is, we're going to go and, and we're going to test Molten Core with eight debuff slots. Next week, we're going to test it with 16 debuff slots. Okay, we're going to test it with uh, the original vanilla values for all the, the boss health and everything, and we're going with 1.12 talents. Okay, this week, we're going to test it with a little bit buffed boss health and stuff. And now let's compare and contrast the the kill times. Let's see this. Let's see that. Uh, is is it trivial with uh, 1.12 talents? Is, is there this? Is there that? A lot of the stuff like behind the scenes, uh, a lot of the stuff like under the hood. That's really what I should say. It's it's under the hood type stuff. I think they gotta they, they really gotta look at a lot of that kind of stuff. And uh, I, I think the alpha or beta or whatever they end up deciding to put out, you know, whatever they want to call it. Um, I think that's something that's very important. They've got to be very very intentional with uh with all the research that they do there yeah yeah the beta has to be prolonged man there's so many things you have to test i mean things like the field of view thing you mentioned that's fan mm -hmm. like how many hundreds of those small graphical you know discrepancies are you gonna have to make sure don't exist right. beyond that like you said the tuning the scaling i mean we know they're gonna they said they're gonna use patch 112 one as a basis but patch 112 one ragnaros looks very different than patch 1.1 ragnaros you know what i mean we don't even know what versions of the bosses they're going to use when they launch the raids. I mean, all of that stuff has to be tested. And it might take six months. It might take eight months. I have no idea yeah. what to get. To. But it would be much better to test things uh, in a long, over a long period of time than to launch the game and potentially just, just really scuff it up. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Definitely a beta and alpha is very important. Every time I mention beta or alpha, there's always one guy that's like, dude, the game's already made. Like, just really... <laughs> Yeah. Like, there, there is a ton they have to do. Yeah. There is a ton. Yeah. I think there's a lot to be said. Um, but for us today, guys, uh, I, I think that's, uh, that's all we have time for. I know uh, I know. I got to get going. And uh, I want to go ahead real quick one more time. Please, please, please hit us with follows. Hit us with some follows. Excuse me. Tips out, baby. 
Stay Safe TV on Twitch, on YouTube, and then the Twitters. All, all the handles are down there below for all of us. Uh, please hit them with some follows. Um, I will be. I, I will not be doing my normal stream after this today. I will be going to do. Uh, I'll be on Raj Patel stream. He'll be doing something called Raj Royale. If you guys want to see me over there, uh, he's doing like some voting you off the island type top type of thing, podcast, whatever. Uh, so I, I'm going to need your guys' support if you guys want to go and, and spam those S Fan TVs, spam those classic emotes, uh, maybe maybe some some tips out in SSTV, no changes maybe. But uh, I'm, I'm going to need your guys' support there. Uh, I'll be hosting Tips. Tips is going to continue his stream if you guys want to go straight to Tips' channel after this. And uh, stay safe. You'll, you'll be streaming this evening, right? Yeah, I'm going to take it from Tips. Yeah, so stay safe. We'll be streaming this evening. And uh, I'll be on Trainwreck's uh, Scuffed podcast after Raj's thing. So uh, I'll, I'll be streaming again tomorrow. I'll do a nice long stream tomorrow. So, uh, again, thank you, thank you, thank you, guys. Thank you guys so much for joining us. I had a great time today. Is this number 10? This is number 10. This is number 10. It's number 10. Hallelujah, wow. dude. Wow. That's crazy. Yeah. Tips, if you want to go ahead and go live, I'll shut it off, and we'll see you guys later. Yeah, thank Sounds you guys. Good. Take it easy. Shower stream next week. <laughs>